Welcome to the Path to Purpose interview show, where we share our unique and universal stories about finding and fulfilling our purpose. My name is Kati Rusanen, and I'm your host and a mentor for Lightworkers. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to purpose. Today, I have a pleasure to interview Naomi Craze, who is a psychotherapist and a soul healer. She channels new perspectives from God on unconditional self-love, forgiveness, grace, and life purpose, which she shares in her book, An Intimate Dialogue with God. The miraculous power of unconditional self-love she also channels answers to people's questions directly from the divine. So it is such an honor to have you here today, Noemi. So welcome. Oh, thank you, Katya. Thank you. I just love your show and, what, and the path to purpose. I mean, it's so important for all of us. And I love how you said unique and universal paths because there is such a universal quality but each one of us is unique and and when we find our unique path then we blossom then we bloom and and we just find fulfillment and joy wonderful and so lovely to have you here and share your path to purpose so could you start telling a little bit more about you and let's put you on the map too so where you are located now <laughs> Okay, so I'm just outside the Boston area in Massachusetts in the U.S., and, and so quite far from where you are, and, and when technology is working, it's such a gift because we can co connect. Um, so that's where I am physically. Do you want to hear about spiritually, emotionally, all that? <laughs> Whatever you want to share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so spiritually, um, I'm on a recognized that I was on a journey um, hmm, quite a number of years ago um, in the tragedy of 9-11 in this country, September 11th, um, 2001, um, when the terrorist attack, I prayed a prayer to be used for the healing of the world, which was not at all where I was at. I wasn't praying at the time. I wasn't really connected to the to spirit, even though I had been at other points in my life. But at that time, I offered to be of service and um, I was just completing my psychotherapy degree and thought that would be the answer. But then about five years ago, I started to channel messages from the divine about, about love, unconditional love and forgiveness that were so liberating to me. And I started to write them down and I wrote this lovely book. There it, there it is, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and intimate dialogue with God. And it's just, it changed my life to receive the messages and, and start to apply them into my life. And so spiritually it's, it's a daily experience of connecting with the divine opening and listening and learning to listen. And that's, that's a lot of my path has evolved from the willingness to listen and the developing the ability to listen. And of course, then the willingness to make some changes because you can listen all you want and stay where you're at and nothing's going to change. So. Oh, that is a really key already here. And I want to point out like one thing is to listen, like having the willingness to listen, then to listen and then to take action because exactly. other <laughs> nothing changes if you are not. So there is the part needed that we also take action. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and it usually is action that's a little bit outside the, the comfort zone, right? So we have the box, you know, like we're here on, on Zoom, we're each in a box, you know, so we're, but we live our lives in a box until we realize, oh, I'm boxed in. I don't want to be unboxed. You know, how do I get unboxed? And so it's that willingness to make, to take action that takes you outside of that box, outside of that bounded perspective of life in that limited way that we all wind up living so thank you so much for sharing that and sharing your journey how you started this was there when you started getting these messages 
Like, how was that experience? Like taking you back, like, <laughs> okay. so, like what's it going? who is talking or <laughs> what happened? It was completely unexpected. I was on my elliptical and in my living room and I was listening to this affirmations recording and it was, you're unstoppable, go girl, you know, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And all of a sudden the recording stops. And at the same volume as that recording, I heard the following words. Love is the fabric of freedom. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness paves the way to freedom. You will know when you are free, when there's nothing left to forgive, because you see through the eyes of love. And that, I just stopped right in my tracks. I was blown away. I knew that this wasn't me, my smart mind, inventing anything, because that was not I wasn't listening to that frequency at all. So, you know, so I knew it wasn't me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I wrote it down and I started to ponder it. And it wasn't for another, that was in a March of 2012. And it wasn't until really January of 2015 that I started to get consistent messages. So I, I had this kind of blip, you know, this like experience. And it was just like, oh, this is really cool. Maybe it'll happen again. And then on January 1st, 2015, I wrote in my journal, I am tired of being anxious and, and unhappy with my life this year. I am committed to embracing what is and reclaiming my joy. And then I started to the next day, I just started to hear things when I was in meditation. I had started to meditate about a few months earlier, every day with my husband, we would go in this meditation, which just absolutely changed our relationship. Mm. Didn't need to go to couples counseling. We meditated together. Um, and it just so deepened our relationship and brought joy. And here, so I was in this place and I'd be quiet and I'd be still. And then I started to hear more of these messages that were all about what do I see when I look at this from love? What do I choose when I choose from love? It was all about self-love and how important it is. And I hadn't really given that too much consideration. You know, I, I would have said I loved myself and I did, but it was very conditional and I was more self-loving when I felt good about myself. Okay, today I had a good day. I, you know, I helped the client, my psychotherapy clients or my soul healing clients. I, I helped people today or today I just snapped at my husband or you know, I didn't exercise or whatever, and I wasn't so loving to myself. So learning to love myself no matter what, and not to change that love, but to see who I am and to see who we all are. And the ability to love myself has helped me to see people for who they are on such a deep level, to see the beauty in everyone that I couldn't see when I couldn't see my own beauty. Yeah, and something you shared there, I just want to point out, like, uh, it's easy to love ourselves when everything goes fine. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, well done. Good for you. You did all <laughs> of the back. Yeah. <laughs> I love to be me. <laughs> yes. But then loving yourself no matter what. Loving yourself also for the moments when things are not going as planned. When you feel like you've failed when you feel like all those emotions turmoil and loving yourself unconditionally I think that was very big thing I was like aha <laughs> it is the big thing yes right so when you're telling the, the, the title of my book the miraculous power of unconditional self-love it is such a big thing and and an important thing and so I received these messages and at one point I finally said, okay, who am I talking to? I was kind of afraid to ask, but I said, who am I talking to? And the answer was, I am the voice of the oneness you call God. And I was like, oh, oh. So <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, okay. No wonder I could never invent any of this. And it's just that that message is so much full of love. And when we make love, a focus of our lives and we make love the perspective so we talk about filtering how you see things right because we all filter everything you know that's why you get two people 
when I do couples counseling, sometimes I'll say, so what happened? They'll say, oh, we just, you know, we had this disagreement. What happened? This one says something. And this one says something that sounds like they weren't even in the same room. And it's because we filter everything. We have a, our yeah. perception is different. And so when we changed our perception to love, when we can see the vulnerability in ourselves and other people, even when we're angry, we can see, okay, they're not just this mean, horrible person, you know, they're hurting. And it doesn't mean that they give them permission, someone permission to be inappropriate in their anger, but you can have compassion. And mm -hmm. that ability to have compassion is so necessary. We're gonna love ourselves because we're so we're so human. We're so perfectly perfect, you know. <laughs> I love it. We are so human. <laughs> That's what we are. We are, <laughs> we are. You know, <laughs> every once in a while somebody says, Oh, I could never do like what you do. And I'm like, I'm human. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. I didn't grow wings or anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Still processing. Uh, but, but what was then there, like for you, when you started hearing these messages and from that to get, have be inspired to write the book? Mm. There's something like, like this is what, these messages are for or how did that come about well i was so what i was was happening other than the elliptical experience which i was busy doing something generally um i was in this meditative state and i was just in the stillness and the message would come so i have this journal right by my side and i would scribble it down i would scribble it down i would scribble it down and i would write it and then when we finished meditation and my husband he has this ability to go deep, deep, deep in meditation, like, hello, are you there? No, nope, not <laughs> calling. <laughs> you know, he goes into the zone or source or someplace. And so he was just there in that place and he called it holding the energy. And when I was done, I would sort of say, okay, and I would share it. And we both had the sense that like, this is like amazing. And I knew from the beginning, it wasn't just like, okay, I'm special and I'm going to get these messages all for me because me, 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 me. I knew that it was because it was to share with other people that this message changed my life so much receiving it. And I started to share it and I, and I have a, I'm part of a spiritual community. We meet once a month. I would read the messages. They were like, oh my goodness, you got to write the book. But, but it was really pretty clear from the beginning that it wasn't for me and then i asked okay so what do you want me to do with this and this is actually the first of four books it was like you're you're being, being gifted a series of books and just record them write them down organize them because they're not organized in the same fashion um i received the messages just kind of depending on what question i asked or sometimes randomly so they're not necessarily organized how I received them so it was like mm. organize them and we'll let you know if you need to organize them differently but so I was given some a little bit of free you know reign with that but always checking with the divine so I knew from the beginning it was not going to be just for me mm. and um you know the first few messages I thought were for me but then when it started to come every day I was like okay this is this is something bigger than me and eventually I said why me because as a psychotherapist, as a soul healer, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people. So I don't have this, I didn't have this big social media following because, you know, you have to protect the identity of anybody you work with as a psychotherapist. So I didn't have this big social media following of people because, you know, I couldn't do that. So, so I was like, find somebody, why are you choosing me? Some people have following, some people have, have people that just are wanting everybody to hear every word. And it was because of my prayer on 9-11 use me for the healing of the world and this was the answer and it was so that happened on 2001 and it was 2000 2012 when i received the first message on the elliptical and that was 2015 when i started to to hear the messages on a daily basis so a long time answer <laughs> you know but and that's what happens because i wasn't ready for this in, in 2001 you know and that's that's thank you for so much for sharing that because sometimes me included we ask things mm -hmm. we it's kind of planting the seed 
like that's how I <laughs> express that you plant yes. the seed and then you might get impatient for waiting that seed mm. to grow <laughs> you're like okay oh yeah, oh, yeah. but Even like you showing yeah. that like it does it just sometimes needs time it needs time and we need time to to grow into especially when we're talking about purpose we need time to to be what abraham says a vibrational match for what we desire so we, for our purpose we need time to grow into it you know and um once i started receiving these messages and i knew that it was going to be a book i got impatient at that point i i created a transcript and it was all done new year's eve 2016 and i was like yes 2017 it's coming out didn't come out to 2019 because i still was not ready i was not you know what i said what why isn't coming out you must become the message i was like oh i have to become the message of unconditional <laughs> self-love and forgiveness ah <laughs> no. i'm just supposed to type this bug <laughs> exactly i thought i was organizing this i'm really organized you know i can i can do this kind of stuff and it was become the message and and i was told we'll open doors for you and, and i was like where are these doors and, so, and it was become the message doors will open become the message and so i didn't know what i had really signed up for at all when i offered that prayer <laughs> you know because now i have to become un unconditional love and forgiveness and and divine gr and i have to become grace and and all of these wonderful things and 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 yet i want to you know and it was choosing to become the message choosing to become the purpose you know choosing to become that so a long time ago, I, I was told by a, a Hopi woman, that Native American medicine woman, that you know we hold life purpose in this in this way. We in the Western you know world, we, we think it's something you do, and then she mm -hmm. said it's something you be. And I, I always remember that. So you have to, I have to be the be that. It's like I be the message, and I'm being my purpose. I'm living that. I'm choosing that. I'm stepping into that, and then opportunities show up i mean i i have a radio show now which is not something i ever wanted to do wow <laughs> yeah i and i'm channeling so i channel i also channel answers to people's questions um in areas they're struggling with or um in next steps and that started in working with soul healing clients that just started coming out of me and i was like so it, i was just talking and i wasn't even hearing necessarily the words beforehand it was just like coming and so so i i had an interview with my book and i and i told the person that i did that the uh, lisa berry who's this lovely woman on untimes radio and and she's like we need to do a show together and so we're doing the show i actually have a show today at in another hour and a half <laughs> so i'm gonna be i'm, I'm gonna be woo you know because after this conversation it's just energizing to me to <laughs> And I'm channeling on a radio, which is like you told me that I went ahead for the hills, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you you are ready. So what now when people are listening to this and they are like, well, good for you. So how can I <laughs> good for you? You became the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, but can you help them when they are struggling? Maybe they have the calling in their heart, but they might or might not be aware of that. But what yeah. be on your learning your own crows yes what were the first steps that you took towards becoming the message oh you... great question katya you know the first thing i would say in my experience is learning to listen so even before i so when i on 9 11 i was i was studying to change careers to become a psychotherapist and i was in my grad school completing class when all of that happened and but before that i used to be a software engineer i was a computer geek you know and i was well this was back in the 90s there weren't a whole lot of women doing it and um i would travel on business by myself a lot of times to do trainings and things and i would be i would be sitting alone in an airport or some kind of food court kind of place and people would say and it's empty and people would say to me is this seat taken by the meaning the seat next to me and i'm like uh, uh the <laughs> no it's not taken yeah i stopped reading my magazine and they would just start telling me about themselves and at the end they would say 
are you a therapist? And I said, no, you should be a therapist. You'd make a great therapist. This happened six times. And the last time it happened, it was actually I traveled to Germany with my boss. And he told me all his, his struggles and then said, you'd make a great therapist. <laughs> A couple, about a year later, I went to, to back to grad school to be a therapist. I said, remember that conversation? And he's like, yeah. I said, I'm going to be going to grad school, so I need to work only four days a week. And blah. <laughs> he's like, I can't believe you're doing this. I said, me neither. So that was the starting, becoming a therapist. And then I studied with a, a spiritual teacher for many years, and that, that just happened. I met somebody who knew somebody and said, hey, this, this shaman's coming to my friend's backyard and she lives near you. And I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. And so it's the ability to listen to the things, the synchronicities that show up, those things, those meaningful coincidences that show up in our lives, the messages, because the universe is always talking. I thought that the universe, that source was a pretty silent pretty silent place. I grew up in this Christian family, so I knew 2,000 years ago. God was talking through Jesus, and you know, then I studied Buddhism, and okay, even further back, the divine is was speaking through Buddha, and it's just like God's the good source, divine, the universe, however you want to call it, is speaking. And your soul wants to complete your purpose. So listen, be aware, you know, take our head out of the sand, out of the out of that blinders that we we wear, the you know, those like the horses, we got the blinders on. And see, look at, see what's showing up. And the desire to know the purpose, because that's right when I word started, is I wanted to know what my purpose is because I felt so purposeless. I felt so empty and unfulfilled doing what I was doing. And so that desire to know is so important. And then the listening, those things will take whomever to, to a place of understanding and opening that you haven't been, because I really am not all that special. <laughs> you know, I'm no more special than anybody else, we're, but we're all special. So I'm equally special, but not more special. And so if you have a desire, if you're listening, if you, if you watch Katya's show, you want to know about purpose. And yes, you have a purpose and it wants you to find it. So it's not hiding somewhere that you're never going to see start to listen start to be open to the messages that the universe is trying to get your attention thank you that was wonderful guidance like mm -hmm. what, how we can get started and now if somebody is like okay i need more <laughs> so how can they find you like Okay, so I have a website, noemigrace.com, N-O-E-M-I is my first name, grace, G-R-A-C-E.com. And I have blog there, and I, I have some special offers, discount, you know, special pricing on, on being able to receive a channeled message. Um, I do like purpose coaching as well. Um, I used to do it a lot more in the past, but I still do it with people that are looking to receive the know their purpose and I know of course you you were a coach to to light workers and so many people are light workers without knowing it mm -hmm. and um I have a Facebook author page at Noemi Grace author just search for Noemi Grace author and um my book is on Amazon the intimate dialogue with God the miraculous power of unconditional self-love and I tell you how to contact me at the end of my book and um I also have the radio show, Access to Angels and Grace, uh, two Wednesdays a month on Own Times Radio. And you can ask your burning question. You can ask a question about what you're struggling with um, or your next steps, relationships, concerns, soul, you know, purpose concerns. Those are great too. All of that. So there's a lot of ways to find me. And, and, and if you find me from any of those, you can always message me on on facebook or leave a message for me on my on my website and i'll see all of those wonderful and i post the, all the links to the comments below so you find it easy and can get in touch with noemi and now i always ask my interviews do you have a special message that you would like to share with anyone who is listening right now <sighs> Yes. So 
if there's any dissatisfaction, like angst, I, I spent most of my life, I would say angst, any kind of, you know, I think it was Thoreau, but it could have been Emerson. It was one of those existential guys in, in the U.S. in the 1800s said, most men live lives of quiet desperation, which included the women, because back then women were included as men. And so um, that inner unsettled, that inner, mm, I don't know, there must be more, or is this all there is? That's your purpose trying to talk to you. That's your soul trying to get your attention that yes, there's more. You are bigger than this. You are bigger than this. The blinders, you are bigger and you are more and there's more for you to receive and to, to do and to be. So we become the message, be, and it may not be a message. It may be something you do. It may be some volunteering, but become that which you, you want to um, share. Mahatma Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And so if there's any dissatisfaction, you're on the right track because it's telling you there's more. So listen to that. And the other thing is assume the universe is trying to talk to you. The universe is trying to get your attention. So start to become more aware of what's anything out of the ordinary that might be showing up because the universe really wants you to step into your purpose, to be fulfilled. And there is support there. So the, the discovery is so important, but the listening and the willingness and assuming that, yes, it's out there. I can, if I open my eyes, I will see it. If I open my ears, I will hear it. If I open my heart, I will know it. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Snowy. Oh, thank, thank you for, for having me here on your show. Absolutely. This was a pleasure. And I'm sure people who were listening to this find this very helpful. It was helpful for me. And I'm so grateful to be connected with you. And have you here sharing your wisdom and sharing mm -hmm. your love and light with all of us thank you so much i really appreciate this opportunity purpose is so on my heart all the time that it, for all of us to to discover and live our purpose it's why we're here it's the purpose you know? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and thank you for watching the path to purpose interview show and if you want to support on your path, you can join the Facebook group, Like Workers Who Succeed on Purpose. We have a community there and we support mm -hmm. you. And I'm sending you so much light and love. Stay well and stay mm -hmm. blessed. Bye for mm -hmm. now.